going on, guys and gals, and welcome to Goodwill Hunting, where today we're going to be giving you our top five horror movies from 2014. We're four years into the decade of the 2010s with our top five horrors. And uh, yeah, be sure to check out our Patreon. We're going to be doing our top five non-horror movies as well from the same year. But yeah, this is where things are picking up, Birdie. We said it last week, and now we're really talking. Things are getting good now. About damn time, fam. We're living up to the hype. Shout through the heart. No, I'm and just you're kidding. I don't... to blame. You'll get love. A bad name. No, it's you're supposed to you give love a good horror ranking, especially from the 2014s, man. Like, come on, man. That's a good point. I apologize. I yeah, I didn't do the lyrics right. Let's go back. Let's do it again. And no, it we right don't now. have nobody <laughs> got no time for that. And plus, you know I forgive you, but but yes, we're here to rank our top five horror movies for uh 2014. So before we really dive on in, uh, what are some of your favorite horror movies that came out in the year 2014? Let us know in the comic section. Without further ado, Brad, do you have any honorable mentions? I got two, man. The last shift. It's a creepy movie. It came out. I mean, I saw it on Netflix or something. It's about this, uh, this, this. I, I don't know this this rookie police officer that has to stay through the night in this police station, and she's the only person. Weird shits happen. It's really creepy. It's really good. I like it. Alongside that, I got Purge Anarchy, the sequel to The Purge. Mm. We're talking bigger. We're talking badder. We're talking more explosions and more deaths. You're gonna find it here in Purge Anarchy. Solid, solid flick. Solid sequel. Nice. Uh, very Two very good honorable mentions. Uh, let me throw out two of some more of my honorable mentions uh, to go along with yours here. The first one I have is The Guest. Uh, Adam Wingard's um, other very popular movie that he did uh, after uh, Your Next and uh, with the success of Your Next. And a lot of people prefer this movie over Your Next. So I'm going to say they're wrong. Uh, but I do respect the movie The Guest. It's very good. Mika Monroe just is a great protagonist in the movie. So for my first honorable mention is the guest and then my second honorable mention i'm not going to spend too much time with this but i do respect the movie and that's the babadook i really like the performance of the mother i do like the creepy atmosphere just the meaning behind the movie the babadook but man i never wanted to pun a kid as hard as that kid in that movie so that's <laughs> the only reason is because of that kid of why the babadook is in my honorable mention first is my top five his name's Baxter, too, man. You got to pump Baxter every time. I'm just kidding. I don't know his name. Brad, anyway. let me say something. Let me say something before we get top 10. Or top 5. Let me say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, number 5 for me is Unfriended, man. This one is it's a found footage-ish kind of thing where the whole thing is taking place on a computer screen as opposed to an actual like traditional found footage. And this, I think it's really the first movie that did that, at least in the horror genre. And it was solid as hell, man. I, I always remember being pretty creeped out by this the first time. We you know, talked about maybe doing this for a watch party at some point here pretty soon, so maybe that'll happen. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Uh, I prefer this over the host. I like this one quite a bit. Do or um, if you get us to that amazing 2,000 subscribers, we'll create our own version of Unfriended when Brad forces me to do that Ouija board. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. We're gonna get the we're gonna whip it out the Ouija board. I'll tell you, it has to be the Wednesday Adams uh, version, or else I'm not gonna do it. You got it. I got. I know just where to find it. Because all I want here in the background is this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, did I just hear myself? I think you did. Oh, well, it's gone. But anyways, let's go to my number five. Uh, my number five is Paranormal Activity 5, The Marked Ones. Uh, going into this movie, I feel like, oh, this is going to be completely out of left field. Uh, and it's not going to be very good for the Paranormal Activity franchise. But you know what? I would say that I call this a good palate cleanser after uh, the sort of memorable uh, paranormal activity four uh that's the first actually technically the first horror movie i actually saw at the theater uh thanks to yours truly over here uh that's so true. thank you so much brad uh well no don't think no that's a not a compliment man i that's said it was true movie. i said i said it was true I know it is true with how horrible it is, but <laughs> and many stories to go with it. But if, uh, I did have a great time with this one. It told a different character, a different perspective. And then once we get to that uh, final act, shit hits the fan in the best way possible. Definitely uh, one of the most underrated like movies within this franchise. 
Yeah, dude, I dig the hell out of it. Uh, no, I don't actually. I didn't like that one at all. But um, I, I messed up. <laughs> I double counted. I double. So I actually, I had a. Uh, we'll cut. We'll count unfriended as an honorable mention. I'll do five and four. Get back on track. Number five for me is actually Starry Eyes. This is a movie about a uh, you know this this girl that goes to Hollywood, just trying to make it big, and it's just a really creepy, weird tension builder kind of movie with some weird stuff going on. It gets fucked up at the end. The third act's crazy. It gets super dark and twisted. I love it. If you haven't seen it, super underrated. Uh, number four is going to be one I just watched this past October for the first time. That's going to be as, ablo- as above, so below. Found footage movie again, where you have a group of individuals going underneath into into the into the into the uh, into the damn tunnels and shit under Paris. Um, and shit, the they just get deeper. The catacombs. Thank you. I kept thinking. Me, catamaran, what my that's catacombs? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they go down and they keep getting deeper and deeper and tighter and tighter. It's kind of like the descent that way. Uh, and shit gets off the, you know, goes off the rails, obviously, as always. Uh, but I just found this movie to be pretty effective as far as building that, you know, that kind of claustrophobic, uh, you know, atmosphere that it, you know, does well doing. So I liked it quite a bit. It's creepy. A lot of weird shit going on down there under those catacombs. And <laughs> hey, me, what my catacombs? Uh, but <laughs> anyways, uh, quick question about that movie. So is the ass above? Or below, that's dude. It gets it both. You just gotta watch it. Oh, and find out. yeah. Real quickly, uh, this video is sponsored by Good Roll Humping, where we determine what ass is above or below. Now I'm just kidding with you. So uh, <laughs> we are at my number four. And Brad, you mentioned this as your number five, and for your honorable mention. But technically, for your honorable mention, I'll go into further detail with it. My number four is Unfriended. Uh, definitely a very unique take on like a kind of like a. What's the best way to describe it? Kind of like just friends goofing around on the internet if then shit goes haywire. Or what we call a malfunction, man, but in the very uh, paranormal kind of way. Uh, but it's just this great folks, just to see the friends collapse and just eventually turning on each other. And just because I feel like that's such a situation that us within our own little horror community group would do is oh, yeah. we'll just throw each other underneath the bus. Brad yeah. will even throw me under the bus for a contact bar. But Unfriended is such a good time. I do agree with my par- uh, with my buddy here that Unfriended will definitely be happening sometime next year for a watch party. Yeah, I like it, man. Uh, number three for me, you mentioned is actually the guest. I. I, th- I found this movie to be really interesting. It's it kind of plays out like a thriller almost. You know, obviously Mike and Monroe is the main character, and then she's got some random dude that shows up, and he's like staying. He's staying with the family for a little bit, and uh, you know, he just it turns out he's weird, and it keeps getting weird. Um, so I like the way that it just you know it you know it builds that up and stuff, and the, the whole tension that's you know kind of getting drawn out throughout the course of the movie. They do a good job with that, and obviously she's great in the movie as well. So yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this, and I'm due for a rewatch on this as well. I, but I remember being super uh, impactful for me. I, I really liked it. Are you uh, like the guest more than your next? No, I would have to watch them both again to, to answer that question. I, I right now I would say you're next, but I've only okay. seen oh, okay. Okay. the guest one time. Yeah, so, um, but I, I would still probably lean towards your next. But we'll see I, after I watch it again. But it's great. It's super effective, man. Well, because if you didn't say you're next, Brad. You're next. Uh, just, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, my number three here, uh, definitely a comedy, uh, horror comedy movie that I feel like doesn't get mentioned a lot. But once it does, a lot of people get excited for it and say how good this horror comedic movie it is. So my number three is What We Do in the Shadows. And if you're a big time like of the horror fan side of, of the kind of like the creatures, like your vampires and all that, this one is definitely uh, more towards you and that you all are going to have a good time with it. It just makes fun of the whole vampire lore and all that. It even makes a great joke about the the Lord's... I was about to say Lord's of Salem, but I still got that on my mind. But the... What is it? The Lord the salem slot that's the one i was thinking of yeah. they have a really good joke with the salem slot of uh, creature in it it's just it's a good time i need a rewatch of it so i can remember some of the material to do a better job to defend this movie but from first watch it was hilarious so my number three is what we do in the shadows i like it uh number two for me another found footage funny enough this one's creep though this is one of my favorite found footage movies it's got mark duplass in here in a creepy role you got a freelance videographer getting hired by some random dude to come film his last day so his kids can have a freaking video of himself. He's got some terminal illness. 
And so, but yeah, the dude gets there. He starts filming Mark Duplass's ass. And, you know, you start getting tubby times and all kinds of crazy stuff's going on. He, he, the dude's weird as fuck. He's weirder than the guest guy. And that takes a lot of weirdness to be weirder than that guy. This guy is probably the weirdest dude on the whole damn list. And I just think the performance is so good. It's, you know, it, it really just has two characters in the movie, but he's really the only one on screen most of the time. And he carries it and he does a great job with it. So I think, um, yeah, I'll take the creep here at number two. When the judge is a hottie and you can't control your body, do the creep bar. Yeah. Do the creep bar. Uh, and get your knees flexing and your arms T Rexing. Anyways, uh, that's a song, not the actual movie. But, Brad, I'm going to join you real quick for my number two is also creep. Uh, recently, I watched this movie for the very first time uh, to do our uh, best horror movie of all time tournament for Fi Fight 2023. And um, I really enjoyed this one. It definitely is now in my top three of found footage uh, horror flicks of all time. Definitely, it creates uh, the best word I could describe it. It's just a very uncomfortable atmosphere. And you're paying attention because you have absolutely no idea what was getting ready to happen. And you just have to pay attention. It's just the kind of like just. It, whatever they throw at you, what creepy ass thing they throw at you is going to be great. Um, and then it turned out to be great. A freaking Peach Fuzz, man. Dude, I yeah. was trying to understand for the longest time what the hell Peach Fuzz was all about. I figured it out. We all love our Peach Fuzz on this channel. So my number two is Creep. It's not a peach you eat for hours. Number one, <laughs> for me, it's the year of my Ikemon Monroe, man. Number one is Hit Follows. This is where she exploded, man. Um, for the, at least a year. I mean, this is where people got to know who she was. And she hasn't done like a super, you know, a ple big plethora of things since then. But she's kind of come back around in 2023. And now, obviously, they follow coming out here pretty soon as well. Next few mm -hmm. years. Or they follow. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But either way, this movie was outstanding. It does such a great job of uh, setting atmosphere up, you know, throughout, you know. The, the the setting and everything is tremendous but you don't really know you know what time frame it's set in like you just don't know that uh but they still make it have so much of its own identity the score is really good it's just a creepy thing obviously we know the story this girl mike monroe she sleeps with some dude and then all of a sudden there's some freaking demonic creature falling her ass until she sleeps with somebody and then passes on to that we all know this the 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 idea behind it is is pretty genius genius i think it's you know it's a cool take on really kind of the same th themes that Halloween brought us before and among, you know, other movies as mm -hmm. well. Um, so I love it for that. It does a good job of tackling that. It has a lot of Halloween vibes throughout, um, if you ask me. So always reminds me of John Carpenter. I'll take it at number one. It falls 2014. Good pick, because that is also my number one as well. How can it not be? Um, it follows number one for 2014, and a lot of what you uh, just established. Uh, Mika Monroe, awesome. The badass score, especially when we enter the third act, where it goes, hits, I mean, like, it hits on the Han Simber kind of, like, hard level, like, burn, da, 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 da. like, dude. I think but, I heard that in a few Hans Zimmer beats. Yeah, I like that. Dude, I'm telling like you, that. it just has Hans Zimmerness to it. And that's why I loved it so much. But I want to mention real quick, too, uh, <laughs> the beginning of this movie where it opens up and we have no idea what's going on. And then uh, the pretty much us as the uh, audience told her to break a leg in this movie. Hopefully we hope for a good performance. She took that too literally. Um, but it was still a great opening scene because they kind of set the tempo of like, oh, shit, what the hell's getting ready to happen? and holy shit what the fuck just happened this movie is just awesome and like you said this was the beginning of a great career for mika monroe i am glad she is starting to make a slow comeback especially uh from last year with the watcher uh so uh mika monroe stick around just like that it creature who always sticks around hell yeah dude i like it i like it i like that yes, that's sir. a good list man 2014 it just keeps getting better 2015 Man, 2015 is going to be fucking tough, man. Especially for the non horse Let me side. take a little sneak peek. Let me take a little sneak peek. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm going to need a couple of weeks to figure out that one. But we don't have a couple of weeks because you'll get that video after you get done watching this one the next week. So let's go ahead and uh, just stop this and let's just get on to the excitement of 2015. What did you guys think about our horror movie ranking list for 2014? Did we get a lot of the movies right? Or are there a particular set of movies that we forgot about? We're a bunch of dumbasses. Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's get that discussion rolling. If you want to help us find the good reels, you can do so by finding us on all of our socials down below. The Patreon's down there as well in the description. Check it out and take a gander.
Yeah, absolutely. And like Brad said at the top of the show, be sure uh, to hit up our Patreon and YouTube membership so you get that access to the non-horror movies for 2014 ranking lists. Um, and then until then, like I said, let's get to the fun stuff now. 2015, here we come. <laughs> 